اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما يا فتاح يا علم افتح لنا فتحا قريبا آمين يا رب العالمين In today's session, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be learning about the two sifat, itabaq and infitah, and idlaq and ismat, inshallah ta'ala. This is the fourth pair, infitah and al-itabaq. Infitah, as the name suggests, it means opening. Like we have al-fatiha, which is the opening chapter of the al-Quran, um, this word comes from the same root letters. Al-infitah means the opening. In the Tajweed definition, it means creating space between the tongue and the palate so that the sound is not trapped. All letters have this quality except for the four letters, which is under itabaq. Itabaq, the linguistic definition is covering, addition, or the tajweed definition it means elevating the upper surface of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. As a result, the sound is trapped. So as you can see, it's the opposite of infitah. In infitah, there was no space between the tongue and the palate. But here, sorry, in infitah, there was a space between the tongue and the palate, but in itabaq, the, uh, because of the elevation of the upper surface, the space is reduced. It becomes less uh, spacious. The sound, therefore, becomes trapped and becomes heavier. And the four letters of itabaq are sad, bad, ta, and wa. So these four letters has uh, more tafkhim, more heaviness in them. Let's understand the infitah and itabaq through the pictures and the positioning of the tongue now. On the right side, you have the picture of a va, the letter a va. So va, as you can see, is the heavy letter, means it's from the letters of isti'ala. But it also has the sift of itabaq, means the sound gets trapped between the upper surface of the tongue and the roof of the mouth. The white arrows that you can see pointing upward, they're straight going upward. That is an indication that the sound is being trapped here. And there is less space for the sound to go out because it's blocked from the front. The back of the tongue is raised due to istila. The front is blocked because of the makhraj of the wa. Therefore, the sound is not getting its way out. So it gets trapped between the roof of the mouth, which is the palate, and the upper surface of the tongue. The tongue from this side also gets raised, even though it has a concaving, but it's been thickened and being raised. Opposite to that is infidah. The letter qaf, as you can see, is from the letters of isti'ala. It has heaviness. It has the back of the tongue being raised, but it has infidah. Why? Because there is no raising of the tongue from the middle, from here. The upper surface of the tongue is not being raised towards the palate. Therefore, the sound gets enough space for it to come out after hitting the palate. We know for all the isti'ala letters, the sound goes towards the direction of the upper palate, the roof of the mouth, before it comes out. So this creates an echo in the mouth, bringing more tafkhim and heaviness to the letter. But um, unlike itabaq letters, the sound doesn't get trapped. It comes out after hitting the palate. So this space is wider if you compare the two positions of the tongue and the palate. In fitah letters, include the isti'ala letters other than the sabad and the ta means qaf, kha, and ghayn, even though these are the letters of isti'ala, but they also have infitah because there is an opening from this side. Let's understand from here, 
the three uh, letters at the back the back of the tongue is raised concave from the middle and also raised from the middle from the upper surface creating less space for the sound to come out so the sound is trapped here the sound is hitting the roof of the mouth due to its tailor tongue is raised concaving of the tongue sound is going upward but it's not trapped it can come out it can find its way out here for istifal istifal uh, is the characteristic of the letters which are light the tongue is even though raised because that's the makhraj of the letter kaf but there is no narrowness of the throat there is no concaving of the tongue from here the sound doesn't go upward it comes out straight out so that the sound is lowered therefore we say the istifal letters are light letters so these are the three positions of the tongue to understand after comparing the positioning of the tongue and knowing more about the sifat okay we have all the seven heavy letters all the letters which have isti'ala the position of the tongue can be understood further um, the letters which have isti'ala and infitah and the letters which have isti'ala and itabaq the letter the qaf ghayn and the kha they are heavy letters because of isti'ala the tongue is raised from the back for all of these three letters concave from the middle as you can all see but the sound is not trapped uh, between the roof of the mouth and the tongue because the tongue is not being raised coming close to the palate for all of these letters you can see there is enough space uh, for the sound to come out it's it's open from the front and fitah means opening and it's open from the middle but for the va swad bad and the ta you can see uh, even though the tongue is raised from the back to twist the but there is narrowness or the space between the roof of the mouth and the upper surface of the tongue is less less space um, it is due to because of the makhraj of such letters this 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 side of the tongue is being used to pronounce the letters so therefore there is uh, more tafkhim in the pronunciation of these four letters the heavier is the letter ta because you can see it's strong in its sifat more heaviness for the letter ta then we have the letter bad from the side of the tongue it, it there is a less space between the roof of the mouth and the upper surface of the tongue so these letters have itabaq isti'ala and itabaq and for these letters the three qaf ghayn and kha these have isti'ala and infitah because of the positioning of the tongue uh, from the middle and the palate next we have idlaq and ismat these are the two sifat with opposites they are not the sifat for the purpose of tajweed but they have been included in the tajweed for the purpose of uh, being careful when you're reading these letters so for us to learn it and being careful for not to make error whilst we pronounce these letters so idlaq and ispat idlaq the linguistic definition for idlaq means from the tip means quickness and the tajweed definition it means quick pronunciation due to the usage of the tip of the tongue and lips and due to the lightness in the letter it means these letters are light you, these letters don't need enough these letters don't need extra effort when you pronounce it they're easy to pronounce it these these letters just slip from your uh, organ uh, let's say for it from the tip of the tongue um, or your lips so therefore we need to be careful not to miss whilst we're pronouncing those letters opposite to that is smart means prevention or cease and the tajweed definition is heaviness in the letter not quick in pronunciation so all letters other than the farwa min lubbin have this characteristic of smart so let's say, for example, if you want to pronounce the letter Kha, Swad, 
G, Bod, any of those letters that needs an extra effort for you to pronounce it. So you can't just rush, just like we can rush whilst we say the letter fa ra mim noon lam and ba because of its quickness in pronunciation. But for other letters other than these ones, you we cannot rush. We need to give some time and effort to pronounce those letters. So therefore when when these letters for Ramin Lubin comes in combination with other letters in a word, it is more likely that uh, you can miss out on in, in, in pronouncing these letters. So these letters can be missed. So therefore we need to be careful when we're pronouncing it, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, uh, we end today's session. I hope you've understood the sifatul lazima that we have covered. The five with opposite five, the total ten sifatul lazima um, we've covered in our sessions. The next one would be the sifat without opposites, inshallah ta'ala. So until then, uh, سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته